Hello and welcome again to the office. Do you guys know what time it is? It's that time. The main reason I created this channel to begin with. It's time to start modding. I'll start by saying that it's not too often that I find complete tutorials out there on how to mod a system. I might find a video on how to install custom firmware, and a video on how to set up some emulators onto the modded console, but rarely do I ever find all of the tutorials in one place. I usually have to search all around the internet to find all of the mods I'm interested in, even if they're for the same system. To try and remedy that, this is going to be the first series of many where I'll be showing you how to mod a video game system, and the different functions and changes you can make to your console once you've done so. The key to these videos is going to be making them easy to follow and accessible to people who haven't modded a video game system before. For that reason, this first video will be a guide on how to install one of the easiest console mods out there. Today I'll be teaching you how to install the Homebrew Channel onto your Wii video game system. The Homebrew Channel is an application that allows you to run custom software on the Wii without having to perform an exploit every time. There are actually quite a few ways to install the Homebrew Channel onto your Wii, most of them requiring that you own a specific game. I'll be showing you what I believe is the easiest method to install the Homebrew Channel, and that's by using a letterbomb file. In order to install the mod, you're going to need just a couple things. You're going to of course need the Wii system, a PC, and an internet connection. If you haven't already, go ahead and activate the internet connection on your Wii. You're also going to need a standard size SD card as well as an SD card reader to insert it into your PC. For your SD card, I recommend a 2GB card. No more and no less. Most Wii software can't recognize an SD card higher than 2GB, so be sure to use that if you want access to all the mods available for the Wii. Now without further ado, let's begin. We're going to start here on the Wii system. In order to create a letterbomb file, you're going to need to navigate to the Wii tab on the home screen. From there, go to your Wii settings and scroll over to page 2 of the Wii system settings. On that page, you're going to want to select the internet tab and then open the console information menu after that. In that menu, you'll be shown two different strings of numbers. The first string is your Wii's MAC address. Keep this open on your screen or write it down. We're going to need it to create a letterbomb. We're going to continue here on our computer. Open up your browser and search for the Letterbomb website. You can either go to Google and type in Please Hack Me, or you can use the link I've provided in the description. As you can see, the Letterbomb website provides enough spaces for you to enter your MAC address. Each Letterbomb file is custom made using the MAC address of your Wii, so be sure to enter it correctly. Once you've filled in the spaces, checkmark the I'm Not a Robot CAPTCHA box. Leave the bundle that Hack Me installer box checked, and click on either the Cut the Red Wire or Cut the Blue Wire button. It makes no difference which one you select. Once you do that, you'll automatically download the Letterbomb zip file that it's created. If you haven't already, insert your SD card into your computer. Move the Letterbomb zip file onto it and place all of its contents onto the root of your SD card. Once you do, you can go ahead and delete the zip file. With all of the files now placed on the root of your SD card, it's good to go. You can remove it from your computer, and insert it into the SD card slot on your Wii. The SD card icon on the Wii Home menu is now highlighted to show that it's been read. Go ahead and select this icon, and it will load the contents of the SD card onto your Wii. Once it's done, we can go right back to the main menu again. The Letterbomb file is now on the Wii system, and all we have to do is activate it. To do that, go to your mailbox in the right corner. The letter bomb is literally a letter, acting as an actual item in your Wii mailbox. When you open your mailbox, you're probably not going to see the actual file right away. You're going to have to find it, but that won't be difficult. Go ahead and start checking previous days in your Wii mailbox. Go backwards about a month. If you don't find it, start going back to today's date, and then go forward a month. Take it slow, or you might accidentally skip over the letter before it can be shown. With a little bit of patience, you'll find an icon of a red envelope with a bomb in it. And that's it. All we have to do is open it. The screen goes black and the system will begin to boot up the install menu. You're going to be shown this warning screen first though. Just wait for the prompt to press a button and then you'll be taken to the Hack Me Installer menu. The instructions are fairly straightforward from here. Select Continue and then go up to the option to install the Homebrew Channel. It'll ask if you're sure, so just go ahead and select Yes. The install is short and easy. Once it's done, you'll be taken to the main menu of the installer. If you want to, you can be all finished at this point. However, I do recommend that you also run the Boot Me installer. This will back up the system and of the Wii to your SD card, which will help to fix your system in the event it were to become bricked. If you want to install it, just select Boot Me and choose the Prepare an SD card option. It'll ask if you want to continue, so select Yes. 
When it's finished, you'll want to install BootMe as iOS. Choose that option and then select Yes again for it to write the files to your SD card. It'll ask once more to install the BootMe iOS, so just go ahead and choose Yes. Once you do that, you can go ahead and return to the main menu and then select Exit to close the HackMe installer. And that's it! You'll be taken to the Homebrew channel. That's pretty much all you need to do to set it up, so you can go ahead and close out of it now. Once you're taken to the Wii home screen, you'll see the Homebrew channel is now available to select. Pretty easy, right? Well, that's just the beginning of our work. There are tons of different homebrew applications to install and really cool mods to explore for the Wii, and the homebrew channel is going to allow us to access a lot of it. Next time, we're going to start taking a look at how to use the homebrew channel to add some more software. If you haven't already, go ahead and like, share, and please subscribe to the channel for the next episode. Until next time, this is Dr. Modelot. If you don't hear from me by Christmas, then have a happy holiday.